All right, hi folks, hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Simone, and in this tutorial, I'll teach you how to draw a realistic skin texture step by step. So this is like an advanced topic because you definitely should master the layering, the blending, the toenail value scale first. I already made a video about these three fundamental arguments. You can find them here on my channel. Please take a look if you didn't, because they will definitely help you to understand what I'm going to do in this video. Okay, first of all, you must understand the mindset behind the drawing. As I already told you in the past videos, one of the fundamental pillars of drawing realistic is the lack of pencil strokes on your paper. You must reduce, at minimum, the pencil stroke to give a more realistic look to your drawings. I've seen a lot of artists trying to hide them with the hard blending, but those lines are still visible through your layers. And they, they really kill the realism because they build an unintentional texture. To avoid this problem, I make a few strokes on a support paper to create a carbon deposit. This is a 2B Contea Paris Pianoir body. You can use any charcoal or any carbon pencils to make this deposit. This will be extremely helpful because you will use this deposit to replace pencils as much as you can. So the first step will be the base tone. Just dip your brush into the carbon deposit and make the first layer. And in this step, just focus on creating the right tone and respect the tonal value scale. That means you should create a transition from dark to light using brushes dipping into carbon. This step is more like painting than drawing and it's crucial because the tones are far away more important than textures or details in general. Um, you can draw the best textures in the world but if you fail in the first step the result will be bad. So just be focused and try to create a smooth and a consistent transition. Uh, once you have completed the base tone, you can move to the second step, the skin blemishes. I'll use a q-tip dipped into the deposit to create some random skin spots. This step will increase the perception of realism consistently, so do it, and the host will try to make these spots smooth with a small brush. Next we have the skin texture and drawing the pores. I'm going to use a needle eraser to make these little white spots. It's really important to slow down and focus on the reference because the pores on a face can't be drawn randomly. They follow a precise direction as the structure they lay in. That's why you should take your time to study the reference and be able to understand the pores direction. The next step is a shadow. As I already told you in the last video about the tonal value scale and the anatomy of the light, each object that gets hit by a light source creates a tonal value scale, same for the pores. They have a highlight, a mid-tone, a curved shadow and a cast shadow. What I'm going to do in this step is to create the anatomy of the light of the pores. Now if I zoom in, you can understand what I'm going to do. Pores are basically depressions of the skin surface that is flat and these depressions receive less light. But if the outside rim of the depression faces the light source, the rim will appear lighter than the surrounding surface. In other words, the white spots we made in the step 3 are not the pores itself, but just their lighter side. In this example that I am drawing, the light source comes from the right. In practice, you just need to make this little black area on the right side of all the pores. I use a 2B graphite pencil. Just don't push too hard or you'll be not able to blend in the next step. Step 5. The blending. Use a q-tip to blend the shadows. Don't use the same q-tip that you used to make the skin blemishes. Use a clean one or you'll make a mess. Try to be smooth and soft or you'll make the previous layer disappear. After the QTP you can also use a small brush to make everything smooth and soft and also to reduce the tonal values that seems too dark to you. Step 6. The shadow. Reinforce the shadow by adding some dark spots. These are the deepest pores and don't forget that every time you blend you reduce the darker tones. That means you should always reinforce the shadow to avoid a flat work. Step 7. Highlights. Reinforce the highlights. If darker tones get lighter with blending, 
the highlighter tones get darker. It means that you must reinforce the highlights. I use our Tombow Mono Zero to bring back a few light spots. Ok, now you can repeat steps 4, 5, 6 and 7 as long as you can reach a good result. Don't forget that a good skin texture needs time to be achieved and more layers mean more realistic effect. Ok, that's it for today, I really hope that this tutorial will be helpful, leave a comment if you have any doubts or questions and uh, see you next time, bye!